What's good, party people? This is your friendly neighbor, Chad the Maverick, back again with a, another video. So, um, for this video, I wanted to, well, first and foremost, Mercury and Retrograde just went direct. And, um, to be honest, it was a lot on me personally. Um, my 12th house is Mercury, so every time Mercury goes retrograde for the most part, in general, it gets harder for me to communicate via word and it really makes me go back into my heart space and i have to kind of reassess life at a different angle because my one means of communication on a general basis is like blocked more so so um but it does this on purpose in a way because it, it allows me to then come back and speak more fluently more eloquently um you might be able to hear me better in a way um, it's not it has nothing to do with volume so it has to do with resonance within a person so within this mercury and retrograde i was working out i was um just i'm just getting back into um biometric st um, stretching and such like that i feel like it's something that helps me um connect to my body a little bit better than yoga traditionally so that's something i'm trying to work into my schedule and my program so i can like keep it going and keep the energy up because it's about being high vibe. I also had, um, I don't know if you ever heard of her, but Quirky Cosmo, I'm probably gonna link her or at least suggest you to follow her. I had a consultation with her and um, she really hit the nail on the head and kind of helped me start to realize where it's like, this is it, like this is real. This is this is Chad the Maverick and I, this is something that like, isn't this more than just that because I'm not, it's not about me, it's about the message, it's about the divine speaking through what I'm trying to convey because I'm allowing spirit to move with me, to move what I what I hope, dream, and intend. I'm allowing this to happen and it's scary. I'm not gonna lie, it's so terrifying because I don't know. Like I'm working on this business, I'm working on my music, but in reality I don't know, but I have faith. I have this in my heart center. When I when I remember it, I start to feel and every time I feel magic happens. Every time I every time I remember to feel magic happens. And I think this is for like a lot of people. We forget to feel because everything that we've been set up to know, everything we've been set up to do has been told no feelings, has been told you need to do this in one specific way. Like there is no one specific way for anything at all but the way that you know they're making it happen for example like i'm even i'm squeezing a stress ball right now am i stressed no but this is the type of the type of energy there's so much that we can accomplish as people that we forget that we forget that we're our own species we're we're advanced quote-unquote species in comparison to the other animals of the earth which is also why we are the ones who are supposed to be the real caretakers of these animals, of these other things. We've been so desensitized to the real human experience and the real human experience is to live and to feel and to just like not know what's going on sometimes. And sometimes I have no clue what's going on. I don't, I have no idea. But in my heart, I know I'm gonna make it through. I know I'm gonna make it. I know I'm gonna like do this. And I know the people that resonate with me and love me and show care for me and affect for me even if they don't understand what my mindset is they at least try to feel what i'm saying for those people i, I appreciate that and that's the connectivity of the human experience feeling and connecting to what someone else feels and understands and having that back and forth having that balance between the two but i'm gonna stop talking about that but that's just my quick thing on mercury in pisces going direct now because now, for example, so let's take everything I just said. We're falling into the feeling, like the, the Mercury falls in Pisces because it's falling into the feeling, it's falling into the divine, it's falling into what it can't necessarily hold on to, but can only experience. You can't hold on to the 12th house. The 12th house does what it does, period. 12th is spirit. Spirit can do whatever it wants, right? <laughs> so it's about resonating as high as you can. So when spirit does what it wants, it gives you more of a on the top of this deck right now i didn't this the high priestess like it kind of just it gives you what it wants so 
what I wanted to do is break down the transits that are going on real quick. Um, attack those, just a couple of them that are important right now, and then transition over and do a couple of readings for the signs um, energetically and then keep it going from there. So, one second. Bet. Um, <laughs> so, Mercury just went direct, and Venus just went into Pisces. So now Venus, Neptune, and Mercury are all going to be affected. So how we speak, so pretty much the communication aspect has fallen to its deepest depths and we don't know how to like go about certain things. However, on the flip end of that, we have um, Venus going into this exaltation. So whereas communication may be difficult as far as regular and logic is it's concerned on the flip end we're starting to really get affected by this new love aspect right even myself like this is venus and pisces this is my 12 hours i'm trying to like show you i'm not in control of this I'm, I'm working with the divine i'm working my best as a divine masculine to provide for the um young men of tomorrow for the men of even older than me for just the masculine energy itself. And as a masculine, divine masculine for me, I have Pallas Athena on my sun and moon. So a part of me is that I'm a divine masculine, but I also speak for and with the divine feminine because I'm trying to understand how we can link together and how we can help make just the divine with one another, with connecting, with doing all of that. And that's a big thing with me is that like, I know I can connect. It's just I have trouble trying to, you know. Um, I have a self note Aries. It's like very individualistic, but I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to convey. And I, I, I'm working with the divine, and I'm asking the divine to help me do so. And it's um, it's amazing to really start to feel it because I'm starting to feel that again. So thanks to all of y'all who have been watching the videos, liking, etc. Um Besides the point, let's get back to Venus and Pisces. So Venus and Pisces is more so, we're starting to, see that? Okay, just, just picture that. See how like I didn't know what to say? So I stopped for a moment, I just breathe. I stopped for a moment, I just breathe. I've activated these parts of my body that are now going to, um, this more fluid. I feel more fluid. And I think that's what this Venus and Pisces is trying to make people more fluid in how they love, how they communicate, how they relate. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's the fluidity that's trying to come through with this Venus and Pisces. And let's skip over to Mars and Gemini, which is going to be going in March 31st. So right now Mars has been a Taurus. So I, I've been slowly working on things personally. I've been building things. I just put out a new song. Um, I've been, I have a bunch of production. I'm trying to, I'm in a writing stage right now. So I'm trying to make more lyrics and add my voice again to things. It's time for that, you know? But Mars and Gemini is pretty much going to be bringing out the child in all of us in a way because we're going to be, it's, it's the child in us in a sense where it's like the, oh, Ooh, ooh, like what's that? Over there, a squirrel. Like, <laughs> that's what I think Mars and Gemini more so is in a way because it's like trying to catch and convey onto so many energetic frequencies. There's like there's an angstiness to it. It's like a little little bit of anxiety. It's like, oh, yeah, like I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. That's what Mars and Gemini type energy is. And that's going in for March 31st. So imagine, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it with the combination of this Venus and Pisces, which is like, this love and this expression. So it's like, what we're going into right now is a bunch of childlike energy fixing towards our dreams. However, that's why Pluto and Saturn are kind of breaking into everything because it's like, it's it's trying to make this new way for us to be that happiness again. Like I offered them this video itself. I'm so happy making this video. Like I'm, I'm like, I've been watching the thing, um, some interviews and videos, and they're talking about suppressed joy. How we have joy that's suppressed because we're supposed to put on this mask and we're supposed to feel certain things about what's on external, but like screw it, like screw all of it. Like I'm trying to be happy. I'm trying to be happy. I want everyone that knows me and 
doesn't even have to know me. I just want everyone to find their bliss, find their joy. Whatever that happens to be, everyone has different points of bliss. Everyone has different points of joy. Some people like sports. Some people like studying astrology and gene keys and all this other, you know, metaphysical science. Science is not just not just woman, but it's literal science. But that's the point. What I'm saying is that like this Mars and Gemini is gonna like give us that punch. It's that little punch. It's the it's the you ever like um have like a little cousin or a kid where you might you know mess around it's like oh you, you're like they're trying to fight you or something but they're just hitting your leg and it's just like <laughs> just like keep punching your leg as much as they can that's just mars and gemini but now we're punching like our our dreams or we're, we're revisiting our dream or not revisiting our dreams our dreams are now established this mercury direct is now stays like these dreams are established now the subconscious dialogue has now been downloaded and now we're shifting back into moving it with neptune as well dissolving all the other things that we thought wasn't going to be there like i never thought i would be on this camera speaking to everybody trying to like teach astrology teach these um metaphysics i, I want to say metaphysics i don't want to just put myself as an astrologer but still like this is this is real this is real this is genuine this is real and i think the next thing when it comes to it is that the new moon in aries is going to be like a new uh, this is april 5th it's going to be a new establishment when it comes to what's next what's our new beginning like the new moon energies is when we plant the seeds for the rest of this year like what do you want to accomplish for this upcoming year what do you want to do for this upcoming year like this is this is important this is major you know so um yeah, I just want to break down some transits, and this is, I pretty much went to April 5th. I'm going to do more of the transits later on, but I wanted to cover Venus and Pisces, Mars and Gemini, and just a slight bit on the new moon in Aries. Um, if you want more on this, like, comment, subscribe, let me know, and I can give more info and give more information and just come on here and ramble my heart away, just because why not, right? Anyway, so let me take this, what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the card readings for the next for the twelve signs, right? But um, for this twelve reading, ah, wow, for this card reading, it's going to be going from now until April fifth. And if I pull a card which I feel like needs a descriptor to it, I will do so. But I'm only going to intuitively intuitively do it for whatever um comes up. I want to just make this raw. So yeah, bet. Now let's get it started. So until around April 5th, here's going to be the um, readings for the energies. So this could be whatever it, the houses themselves and, the, and it's the energies themselves in Aries. So if you have something in Aries, this is how it's going to be affected. So if you have a Mercury in Aries, this is how your Aries is going to be affected. If you have an Ascendant in Aries, this is how. Just pay attention to the energy itself. But um, for anyone who's more um, new to this, this is for your Sun, Moon, and Rising. All right, cool. So Aries. Aries, you have the two of pentacles. So the two of pentacles involved, I think this is more so, and on the bottom of the deck is the nine of swords. So the nine of swords and the two of pentacles, uh, the ball just rolled into my hand after that. It's funny. Anyway, but <laughs> matter of fact, this is the two the two of the two of pentacles is this is this great beautiful idea this is all the energy this is the energy of the infinite right the airy season this energy of the infinite and you're just tossing it and it's in your hands and you can choose to do whatever you want with it anything you want to do is literally like in this big red ball this aura right but the thing about it is there's a certain fear there's a fear about it there's like this is some almost like it's not a nightmare but there's this type of anxiety that comes along with having all of this power. There's there's something that that's almost startling. It's your season, like it's, the energy's all right now, like it's almost startling. And yeah, like another thing, it's like you you get blinded towards seeing it, and it can lead you into. Hmm, I'm gonna pull something else. Right now. Ah, so the Queen of Swords. So you're balancing this. But the way that you're supposed to go about it 
is in the Queen of Swords manner. So it's like, don't let people know. I don't say don't let people know. Allow yourself to feel this like fear, but just remember the infinite is literally in your hands. Like it's in your hands. You can do whatever you want with it. You can mold it. You can do whatever. Just make sure you have the mindset of holding it down like as a queen, as this regal figure, because that's the way that things are going to work out the best for you in this scenario. But be willing to fight for anything you believe in because people may be doubting you even though it's your season they shouldn't doubt you in the season be careful but don't fight too hard just be be ready to debate your point right cool Taurus Taurus rising I got the Queen of Swords again so there's been two times when I've done a uh, reading where Taurus got the same card as Aries again which is interesting um I don't think it's because of how I shuffled this time. I, I believe that's what it is. So, um, Taurus, you're having this newfound lifestyle when it comes to knowing that you are in this presence tense. You're in this intellect. Um, it's pushing you forward. And I think this trying for y'all with um, Pluto and Saturn is really bringing you into this like power. You're coming into this new queenly power or divine feminine form of power if you're a male or female it doesn't matter um we need to stop that anyway like the masculine and the feminine are two energies so just don't take it any type of way it's way more out well, not the point what i'm saying is for Taurus though let's pull something else strength right so you're finding your new sound you're finding your new found strength when it comes to Life, life. Uranus is in Taurus. Uranus is giving you this power, this new power. It's like everything that you've been working on on a Earth, like three D physical way, is going into another dimension. Like you, all of those work, all of those like times and hours that you grinded are now like transcending themselves into this new sphere of value, of this new sphere of power. And I think that's what's coming through. When it comes with all these upcoming transits, tell about April or something. Yeah. So that's dope, Taurus. So let's go over to Gemini. Gemini, rising, sun, moon, Mars, anything you want. The Queen of Cups. All right, Gemini, prepare to enter your feelings, but prepare to know that. It's what you've sowed as well. It doesn't mean a necessary thing. So the thing, so the things that you've sown previously and waited for, you're now kind of, you're entering this new spiritual, spiritual phase. It's not spiritual. You're you're finding this new emotion. You're finding the the emotions that Gemini cut off because of their mental chatter is now like starting to show in what they're doing. So the things that they're making and creating, like they're their emotional backing is now starting to be shown. Their connection to this wish fulfillment is now starting to come to be. Like anything that they've like put out into the universe, like I want this, is starting to like show in its and it feels good. It feels nice. Like it's like, oh, where? Oh, okay. Oh. Like it feels nice to get back into the emotion. As a matter of fact, and at the bottom of this, I got the eight of wands so this is coming in so all the things that you all the little things that you started and didn't think would come into fruition are now in your face like when mars goes into gemini they're gonna hop in your face like hey 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 like they're just <laughs> gonna be right there so weird that's awesome um so that's my reading for gemini so i think mars and gemini is definitely gonna be the the um the catalyst is the wrong word, but it's going to pretty much start that up. So it's awesome. So we have for Cancer, Rising Sun, the Wheel of Fortune. Fortune, Fortune, Fortune. Chun, Steph, oh, shine, shine. Let me stop. But um, that's the song I have, Comfort. Um, all streaming services. <laughs> anyway, but um, when it comes to Cancer, right, you haven't. You have been down on your luck. Cancer energy has been down on its luck because Pluto, the opposition to Pluto and Saturn has been just... The North Node has just been like... 
Like, <laughs> it's one of those things because the North Node and that's starting to, um, it's it's trying to level you up. It's trying to level you up. It's trying to give you this Ace of Wands, this this infinite potentiality into whatever you want. Um, let me look one more time. Word. And what it's helping is it's going to be giving you a new establishment, new establishment, new work, new connections to what you deem as family, what your explanations of what family are going to change. Um, the way that you see lovers and potential mates are going to change because it's making you get to the bottom of like the shenanigans are starting to like dwindle, right? Um, it's starting to go straight to the real thing, which I feel like is something most times can't like to hide in their shell, but the real thing's always underneath. And so now this energy is making the real thing come out and you're supposed to give this to your family or with the people that are around you helping you. And that's how you're going to gain new establishment and new wealth within this time frame. So <laughs> let's go out to Leo. Leo, moon rising. Whatever else Leo's in for you. Total cosmic power. Um, but <laughs> the sun card, so you are literally hitting this new solar flare. But be careful in a sense, because before this sun comes out, there is a massive reset. There's going to be a massive reset that makes you like, like, it's it's hard to explain. It's uh, 10 swords in your back. 10 swords. Like, it's going to suck for a, for a very quick moment. But it's almost like a, it's like a light. It's like, this is the night before, right? This is the night before. This is the embracing of the emotions. This is the embracing of like everything that's crazy. But then it's going to turn into this when the sun comes up. The sun comes up the next day. So that night sucks. The next morning. Sun card. I'm back to it. And when Leos get back to it, they get back to it, which is awesome. Love that about Leo. And with the fire, so now you're going to be in a position where you can help other people. Or people are going to start giving you new opportunity with that. So that's great. That's saucy. All right, where? So that was Leo. Let's get to a regular goal. Regular, 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 regular. Hey, hey, Virgo, hey, Virgo, hey, 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 lit. Virgo, everything's about to explode. Woo! <laughs> because, yo, they're going to understand your emotions that everything's going to explode. Get used to things kind of falling apart, to be honest. A Virgo, y'all have it so... <sighs> because, like, when when everything, the tower card happens for Virgo, they're like, I have been predicting this tower to fall for the past three months of my life. And I've been saying, if we don't do X, Y, and Z, everything will go to crap. Well, now it's actually going to crap. So you were right. <laughs> I know y'all love to hear that, but you were right. So, but what's coming from this tower is that you're going to be this this page of cups. Like, yes, people are stupid. But because you coming into this page of cup energy, you're going to be like, I know I told you about this, but here's how we can fix that for you. And here's how we can relay this and make you feel better. Like, this is what the... Um, page of cups is coming up with after this uh tower type scenario so yeah awesome that's where i go so don't you knew it was gonna blow up just let it blow up be fine though for libra libro libra boom we got um the king of pentacles and on the bottom of the deck the 10 uh i told they whatever libra Listen to me in my last pull. It was like, I was like, let the schemes come through. Let the, oh, this is move time. This, you are now like this. You're like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Everything worked out exactly how I planned. Evil laugh, evil laugh. Like, <laughs> I think the full moon really helped you just like push whatever that was forward, um, which definitely helps. So I think that was probably the case when it comes to Libra. And, um, yeah, so that's dope. 
Oh. Uh, so, the four, jump back in the deck as I try to pull it out, but the four of um, swords popped up. So, now that you've accomplished this, it's time to take, like, a little bit of rest. Not a lot of rest. Like, like take a night off. Like, one night, two nights off to yourself, by yourself, and just sleep. Trust that's going to help elevate this and elevate that and like all the investments that you put in are going to just duplify, duplify, amplify, multiply, prosper. <laughs> so that's the one for Libra. But um, cool. Let's go to Scorpio, Scorpio, Moon, rising, whatever is in your chart. Boom. All right, cool. So... We have the seven of pentacles and we also have on the bottom of the deck the four of swords so within this time there are seeds that you have planted and are growing into the fruition as long as you water them every day so make sure you water them every day make sure that they're set but the reason why it's so interesting to get both of these is that they're already watered like you don't have to stand here this whole time and watch them like you've already watered it don't have to stand here like and monitor like rest go rest like there's no need to keep all the things that you've implemented like they're already be they're already in motion you put it in you've intended it it's in motion so definitely let that grow as it does and rest in the process like relax so everything's gonna be okay like it's time to, it's time mars is a chill time for you because you've already like put in that you have that mars energy in your feminine nature so you're receptive so you're receiving this new mars energy like the seeds are coming through for you and at the bottom of the deck is the magician card so if you rest you'll be able to find yourself in this that magician standpoint where you're able to create on a whim you're able to create through the purity like the those four swords is kind of like purifying your intent when it comes to things so then when the magician comes you're able to just do whatever you want oh this is literally fell out the deck as i was doing this but on the other end of this there is um a feeling of poverty might be the wrong word but there's going to be a feeling of of like just this negative feeling where you don't you're gonna feel like you don't have enough or things aren't gonna like despite whatever it is like your feeling feelings is gonna be like i'm not i'm not enough this isn't enough and um it's something to move past and definitely keep in mind the things from beforehand because that's gonna allow you to see why all of these things are stringed together so even if you watch this i would suggest just clicking back again on this scorpio tag in the bottom so you can just really see this and then you'll understand why like it'll wrap together trust cool so for Sagittarius I had to do that I had to <laughs> shouts out to the homie Jupiter Zeus man all that boom oh ready so on this we have the the page of Pentacles so this small this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Like this is the little light in the hand. It's like I have an idea, Mr. Krabs. I have an idea. And intemperance. So then after that, it's like, um, so this there's a newfound peace because there's this new idea, there's this new fruit of labor that you've kind of like put together. It's like a plan that's being hatched. Hey. it's a plan that's being hatched in a way and then temperance is telling you that this plan is being hatched the more that you dive into your own tranquility um sag energy is a tranquil energy but we we tend to do a lot but the reason why it's tranquil is because we know how to move while staying still make moves without even moving so to speak i have a song about that too anyway but um yeah the last one for sag queen of sorts so keeping a mental configuration on keep though despite the fact that you have these plans in motion make sure you keep these like written down i welcome back party people um 
Welcome back, party people. Um, so my uh camera memory literally ended. So I think it's because we started Capricorn and the Saturn and Pluto aspect. But that's not important. Anyway, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, etc. Queen of Swords as well. On the bottom of the deck, you have the Magician. So with that being said, when it comes to the Queen of Swords, the magic and the Queen of Swords and the, the peace, Queen of Swords has been a huge theme. I think the Queen of Swords is definitely representing like the Athena reference to this Aries transit. But I think um, when it comes to at least Capricorn, y'all are starting to see the magic in holding out your plans in a logical way. You're starting to see what really makes the Capricorn's magic. Like you're starting to see how Cap, as a Capricorn, you're starting to see how Caps actually hold magic. Cap isn't just the goat, it's the sea goat. It's the goat, half of his tail is in the water, half of it is on top of the mountain. So that's a huge thing to point out. There's something else with Cap I wanna point out. Literally got the same, yo, that's crazy. Nah, like I literally shuffled it a whole different way and the Queen of Swords came out again. So yo, definitely feel into that divine feminine nature, the one that makes you want to organize. Cause the way that you organize, you're about to you're about to cause something really cool to happen. So keep that in mind for Capricorn where my Aquarius is Wow, that's interesting. Side of thought. Anyway, the magician straight off the bat. So you have the magician and on the bottom of the deck, you have the chariot. This is your time, Aquarius. Stop being regular alien people. Y'all my people. Don't get me wrong. Y'all my people. But make those moves, you weirdos. That's not a, that's not offensive. Like, just be weird. You know it's not offensive. What am I talking about? Y'all Aquarius. Yo, if y'all be weird. You're not weird enough. How about that? You're not weird enough, Aquarius. You're not weird enough. Weird means you are the master of your fate and destiny. You're not being weird enough. You can write your own story. Write the story. Like write it down on paper. Yeah, that's funny. Write it down on paper. Write down the story on paper. That was a random synchronicity. Write the story down on paper. The story that you want, that epic story, that epic, write it down on paper. Welcome. The Emperor. Write it down on paper. Put this as your intention. The Emperor. You wanna the Emperor? Alien Emperor. No. Write it down. Do it. Pisces. <laughs> Pisces, we have the Ten of Cups. Nine of Cups. Wow. But when the Nine of Cups is there, so there's a new wish that's coming through. My camera's about to die. There's a new wish that's coming through that's just your fulfillment, but it's going to come from a nightmare, which is going to be weird. So it's like you're going to have this type of nightmare. Like you're, you're going to think something's going to be in the worst despair of you, but in turn, it's actually going to be giving you the biggest gift. And I think this is Neptune on his troll. <gasps> I dropped two cards. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But, um, so this three card just fell out for Pisces. Just like this. So, there's a man. I think this, this is, uh, one of these is you. Another one of these is like a spit. There may be a, all right, ready? There may be a debacle. Debacle or a fight between a king figure and a queen figure in your life. This may be for you, but this debacle, oh, sh so this is the king of wands and the queen of wands. So this is some, this is like Jay-Z, Beyonce, debacle. But the funny thing about Jay-Z and Beyonce getting in the debacle and the Knight of Wands is on the bottom. Oh, it's so royal flush. Just about. But um, wow, that changes the whole meaning. Hold on. Ooh. 
Wow, that's crazy. Pisces. Yo, Neptune pulled up for y'all all the time. I don't know. But um, that's definitely a story. The King of Wands. There's going to be a fight between this King of Wands and Queen of Wands, which is only going to be stopped by someone with this Knight of Wands energy. And the Knight of Wands is showing that this old regime and this old thought and these old actions are no longer valid in this new dimensional energy that we're heading into that has started ever since even 2012. So like, this is uh, this is crazy. So I don't know what part of that you're going to play out, Pisces. You're going to intuitively know, but you're going to be a part of that story. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the... I'm just going to do one for everybody. Just to do one for everybody. Yeah, that's fine. Ace of Cups. But this Ace of Cups is coming from leaving this. So leaving this sadness, this whatever, is going to bring you into your spirituality fully. Your spirit. Not your spirituality. It's going to bring you back to your own source. I want to stop saying spirituality. I'm not a fan of that word anymore. It's bringing you to, to yourself, to who you are, your fluid being on the inside. Wow, yeah, that was, um, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I, I had to have fun doing this. I want to have fun whenever I do these readings. So y'all can have fun too, in the process. I'm Goofy Goober, yeah? Um, I'm playing this up. <laughs> this is your friendly neighbor, Chad and Maverick, signing out. Hope y'all have the best time until this April 5th, I'm going to be still holding my readings. Um, I put the prices now, but I have now beefed up how my readings are being done. So most of my readings are going to be 30 minutes or more and have more information contained within them. So check those out. Um, Hit me up, DM me. If you want something specific too, I'm open to hear whatever. And if you want me to cover a topic within this time frame, leave a comment down in the description. Because this is the reading until April 5th-ish. So, yeah. Hope all is well in the universe for you. And um, this is your friendly neighbor, Maverick.